so it would be easier to transport like drinks and food and everything and then power for the DJ or, or, or whatever we choose to have. So that area was really nice as well because it was lined with pillars that would make a great frame for the ceremony and pictures and everything so that was as well. So Clifton Hall was great on a whole except that it was just a venue. I mean we would have to you now bring in everything so it it seemed like a lot to do for just a venue like you know it was just a venue and it wasn't it wasn't even the cheapest just a venue place. Next on our list, I think, was Pollard's Mill, which is in St. Philip. And Pollard's Mill was also highly recommended because Claire's friend had her wedding there at the beginning of the year. So Claire knew what it was like. So we went there with already an idea of what to expect and what it would look like. It was just for Nick and I to, to see it because Claire had already seen it, had experience it and everything. So we knew what, what she was going to see, basically. Pollard's had two options. You can rent the entire venue, um, which is like a lower lawn, which is huge and massive, um, that can hold the reception tent. And then she had um, palm trees on the other side that had built in like cocktail ta tables around the, around the trunk. I could already imagine what it would look like with the decorations and the lights and everything. And then the other option is you, that you can just rent the upper half which includes the mill for signing and for signing the license and everything and two sets of lawns so the first lawn that we saw was what I assumed was gonna be the ceremony lawn because it had the mill in the background which would be great for pictures and then the second lawn was with more kind of I, I don't want to say disjointed but it wasn't as clean and flat as the first lawn but then by the time we by the time we, we left I had imagined what it would look like with the ceremony on the second lawn because of how it is arranged. There are trees on one side and then the mill was still in the background. And then the guests would sort of like pan out like that so they can see everything. And yeah, and then we talked to her about possibly ha having the reception on the second lawn, sorry, on the first lawn that we saw. And she's like, yeah, it could work great because the kitchen is closer to that lawn as well. So that was also a great thing. She has bathroom facilities there and everything. And um, her, pa her package had include a night stay at the bridal suite as well. So that was great. And what else did she include? She included tent, chairs, and everything. There was also a high contender because... It was like a one-stop shop, you know, you go there, tell her what you want, and that's basically it. The balls were already pre-lit, so all we had to do was tell her what lights we wanted, and then she just changed the balls up what we wanted as well. The property has a lot of trees on it, which is great for putting lights and lanterns in there, and it already has like a, a path that can be used for the aisle. So a lot of the stuff that you would need are built into the venue, which is great. So you wouldn't have to think too much about where would the aisle go, where would the lights go? The lights are already in there, the power is already going to light, so a lot of it is done for you. So that was Pollard's Mill. But next was Lancaster. Um, Lancaster is another great house in Barbados. I want to say it's in St. Thomas, is it? Yes, it's in St. Thomas. And it is a gorgeous, gorgeous property. Um, when you drive in, there are trees lighting the driveway. He says that for events they have the tea torches there and it, it just seems really, really nice. It was really nice. It seems really nice. It was a really gorgeous place to look at and to see it even before it was lit up and decorated. Um, basically the events are held in, in the back where he converted a pool into a deck, a covered deck. So if you were to have your wedding there, you wouldn't have to pay for a tent or flooring because it's already built into the venue, which is another thing you look for when looking at venues is what you would have to bring in to make it useful for your event, for your wedding. So him having the deck there already was a great thing to see that you wouldn't have to pay for a tent. Um, he does have a lot of plants there. Um, basically, 
basically he has a lot of flowers that he cares for and takes care of and most I think they're all local. I want to say they're all locally grown. So um, for flowers and everything he can provide the flowers for you and there are a lot of there are a lot of little areas that are under tents that he already, that he already has that are good for like cocktails and stuff before the reception from the ceremony to the reception. He has great bathrooms and he said that they do the decorations themselves so you don't really have to do much but pay for what they have to buy. Um, they have their own bar so you wouldn't have to bring in your own drinks or worry about where to place the bar or hire staff and everything. They hired students to, to do it, the hospitality students. He only works with one particular caterer and the prices he gave us were, there were two choices he gave us in catering where it was buffet or a la carte. The prices, the difference in these prices were so big that it's hard to decide like is it worth it to go a la carte and spend more, that much more than just sticking with buffet and hoping that it's just good. You know what I mean? So, and it was, it was very expensive. But you save money because you don't have to pay for venue. He was one of those where um, the cost of having the event there is included in catering and the decorations and everything else that you paid for. So um, you didn't really have to worry about paying for venue. The downside of, of Lancaster was that you couldn't get ready there. Um, since he lives there with his fa family um, in, in the actual great house, you can't get ready there and the place that previous brides have gotten re ready, he's converting to a gift shop. So that was out of the question. So it would have to be that we get ready at a hotel or somewhere close by and then come there ready. Which is still an option because it's possible, but the issue is the heat here, you know. Um, will you be comfortable getting in and out of cars, um, going from heat to AC, and it's just, yeah, there's that, there's just that to think about. Next on our list was Bellevue. Bellevue came highly recommended. Um, the photographer we spoke to, Nigel Wallace, he he got married there and he said it's a great place, great venue. They're very accommodating and <clears throat> they can personalize the packages for, for you. So they are one of the first places that I called to get some information about and they said tell us, tell us what you want and we'll do it and everything. And it was great to hear that until you hear the prices attached to what that comes with. But it was a gorgeous place. What I loved about Bellevue is you can get ready there, you can stay there I think. Yeah, you can stay there a couple of nights. So you can stay there a couple of nights before or after your wedding. They also had this section of the property where there are these trees that create the perfect place for a ceremony. And since and since their property is like tons of acres large, you don't have to worry about getting like houses in the background. He basically just gave us a rundown of what details you have to think about to include for a ceremony and reception at a venue and he was very helpful in then moving forward to the other venues to ask questions. Um, in terms of pictures, there are a lot of options for pictures and and everything because the, the property is so large that you have a lot of options. And plus, the, the biggest reason, well, one well, of well, the biggest reasons why I was leaning towards there was because if we went with Nigel as our photographer, he knows the venue well. He got married there, so he would know exactly like where to take the best pictures and what moments to capture there at the venue. So it's so because he was familiar with it, it gained a couple points over the other venues that he was not so familiar with or that he hadn't worked out yet. Right next on our list was Beachy Head, which is a guest house in St. Philip, and it has the most gorgeous view. It's on a cliff, so it has the most gorgeous view of the ocean, and it was just really pretty outdoors and everything. So basically, it has this um, it has this area set up facing the cliff and the ocean that is great for a ceremony, 
and would be perfect for pictures during the ceremony. Um, and it has a space for the guests and everything to sit for the ceremony, for the ceremony so that was great. And then across the property it has, it has this um, area that is lined with pine trees that arch over and it, makes, it would be the most gorgeous backdrop. For the last on our list was Sugarland Gardens. We had looked at Sugarland before we even started to look at venues. It was just a place that seemed to have the, uh, like the great packages and everything. So we had looked at what they had in it and then we told ourselves we'll, we'll go back to that, but we never did until until right after Bellevue we found it again. And it's basically another one-stop shop. Be, like you tell them what you want and they provide everything. And it was really affordable. It was in a category of um, the cost of renting the venue is included in the decorating and the catering and everything that they, that they provide. So that was really great. Um, because that's what we wanted. We wanted that one-stop shop place, you know, a turnkey place where you tell them what you want, you show up, everything goes smoothly and it's done. It has a really nice lawn area for the reception, sorry, for the ceremony and cocktails. It has a koi pond under a bridge, which is really pretty. And the area for the reception is actually in like a, a concrete paved area, which is then led with flooring, so you don't have to pay for flooring. It's included. And yeah, um, it has um, it has adequate parking and everything. So it's a really nice area and it's not too big for the wedding size that we're having, so it wouldn't look too sparse. So that was another thing. Bellevue was so big that we were worried that it, our wedding would look kind of disjointed. Sorry, it would look kind of disjointed because there's so much space and then a lot of people. So we wanted it to still look intimate and close-knit and everything. So Sugarland did that. Um, the decorations that they have, don't worry, they didn't exactly match what we want. But um, he said that once we tell him what we want and everything, then it could be done. They also have a built-in pergola um, in, in the lawn. So it would be already built-in, all the food is decorated. And for pictures, it or, um, it's on it's on higher ground, so you can see the ocean on one side of the property, which is gorgeous. And I think it would just look really pretty, especially at sunset. That would be really nice. And it's not in um, it's not in a very it's not in a populated area, so you don't have to worry about neighbors or playing love music. So Sugarland is a like another high contender, um, especially because you don't have to pay for the venue, it's included in the cost of catering. A downside was, he wasn't so willing to tell us who the caterer was. I know um, it's to avoid us just skipping him and going straight to the caterer, but um, I, I feel weird sort of having an event at a venue and not knowing where the food's coming from. So that is it. So that's basically, I think, six venues we looked at. And now we have to just choose who we want to go with and then put on the deposit to book it for our date. Basically, we've learned a lot from going to these venues. At the end at Sugarland, we asked a lot more questions than when we went to Clifton Hall, which basically just shows us what we've learned along the, the way of knowing what to ask for. Um, yeah, that's it. The venue is basically chosen. All I have to do is tell them that we chose them and tell them what we want. So just to create our own package. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it, if you want to see more of this wedding series, and if this is any help to, to you, especially. As, and I think it'll be great for a destination wedding. I think Barbados is a perfect place for that because, I mean, who doesn't want to get married here? So keep watching, subscribe to my channel to see what else I'm doing. And for a life update, go check out my blog. Um, the post should be out by now. I started it two nights ago. I'm meant to finish it today. So yeah, go to my blog, which is linked down below, to see what else I'm doing with my life and everything. So I'll see you guys in my next video, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!